Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here with your word for the day. And today we're looking at Matthew 4, verses 12 through 17. And if you read this, you might think this is one of those sections in the Bible where you come to and you're like, what does this have to do anything with me or what is the point of this being in here? And so I'm going to give you some uh, reasons for why it's in here and how it can apply to us. Um, because no matter what you're reading in scripture, whether you understand it or not, we need to remember that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for us, for God to teach us, correct us, and train us. Um, so all scripture is beneficial for us. And so there is a point and purpose. So we're going to look at that today. And it says, now when he, referring to Jesus, heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that when what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness, have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the first thing that we can see that is important in this passage is it gives specific details about Jesus' life. Um, it shows what he was doing, where he was living, where he was traveling, and these are important to show that he was a real person and that he was fully human. Um, and this is important to know that Jesus was fully human and he was fully God. And so those details show his humanity. Um, and then it shows how Jesus fulfilled prophecies. Um, Isaiah was written hundreds of years before this event happened and Jesus is fulfilling what God spoke through Isaiah. And so this is so important um, because it shows that God's word is trustworthy and true and it always comes to pass. And so we can trust in what God says in the Bible. We can know that it is 100% true and it's trustworthy. And so we can trust God with every detail in our life, with what's going on, because we know he is secure and he is trustworthy and he is good and what he says is going to come to pass. But it also shows Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament. And so the importance of that is that the fact that the Bible is one continuous story and it all points to Jesus. From the beginning of creation until the book of Revelation, it is all pointing to Jesus. And so it's, I want to encourage you guys to study the Bible as a whole because the more that you study it and the more that you understand it, you can read the Old Testament and be like, oh, it's referencing this in the New Testament um, and can make those connections. Or you can read the New Testament and be like, oh, this referring to this prophet in the Old Testament or this event that the people of Israel went through. And so you can see how the Bible is God's plan written through all history in this seamless um, book pointing all towards Jesus. And it's so beautiful to see that and to experience it and say, wow, like God had a purpose and a plan. And, and the good thing is like nothing has messed up God's plan. God's plan from before he created the world was that Jesus was going to come at this specific time in history, be born of a virgin, live a perfect sinless life, and die on the cross to take all of our punishment and shame and guilt and sin and give us forgiveness and freedom in him. That was his plan before he created the world, before Adam and Eve ever sinned and all of us throughout all of history ever sinned. That was God's plan and nothing and no one for all of history can mess up God's plan. And so that is so freeing and encouraging knowing like there is nothing I can do and there is nothing you can do that can mess up God's plan because God's plan is perfect and it, his timing is perfect and good. And so we can trust in that. Um, if you want to know, like, what is this specific, 
like prophecy referring to? Like, what's the point of this? Well, to understand a little bit of history, uh, the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali had been dominated and conquered by the Assyrian nation um, way, way back in the Old Testament. Um, you can read about it in 2 Kings. Um, but they had been dominated by Gentile nations for hundreds of years. And so they were desperately longing for God's deliverance. And they wanted it in the form of uh, military deliverance. But so Jesus is fulfilling this prophecy in that these people are experiencing God's light and his deliverance first through Jesus. And it's not just for them. It's also for us as well, because people that don't know Jesus are still dwelling in darkness and they need to come to know Jesus and have that life changing encounter with Jesus so they can step into the light and experience his peace and forgiveness and freedom and his hope um, and not have to live in darkness. And so if you've never taken that step of experiencing a life changing relationship with Jesus, I would encourage you um, reach out to the church or you can right now just pray and ask God uh, to forgive you of your sin and accept him as your Lord and Savior um, to experience what it means to step into Jesus's light. Um, the last thing is Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, this was so important then just as it is now. We can all repent. First, if for that first time repentance of salvation with Jesus, of repenting and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. But if you've known Jesus for a year or 50 years, we can all repent because we continually sin and need to come and repent toward Jesus. Repentance means turning away and, and turning how you think, changing how you think. Um, so it's not just saying, I'm sorry, and continuing to do what you've been doing. It's saying, I am sorry for what I'm doing, and I'm going to completely change how I live and how I act. It's turning away from sinning and turning toward God. And this results in a changed life. And so just as Jesus was calling the people back then to repent, he's calling us to repent as well. Whether that's for the first time to start a relationship with Jesus or just you've been living in sin. Maybe it's in a direct rebellion against God and you need to repent and come back and start following him. Or maybe it's just in a small way of you're believing a lie and you need to repent from believing that. Um, we can all repent and follow God um, more and more each day and choose to repent and cast aside our desires, our wants, our selfishness, so that we can follow God more closely and know that Jesus is there. He is waiting for you to come to him and repent. He wants to accept you with his open arms and give you his love, give you his peace, his forgiveness, his freedom, and his hope. So no matter where you're at today, I pray that you would come to Jesus, that you would surrender everything that you're carrying, that you would repent, and that you would be able to accept his love for you. I hope you have a great day, Calvary.